Kia ora, welcome back, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can add a camera zoom effect uh, to your character. Um, so you can see that uh, when I shoot without the camera zoomed in, this is sort of how much recoil I have. Uh, when I do zoom in, there's a lot less recoil, so it makes the gun easier to control. Um, I can also like look straight up at the ceiling and straight at the ground, and the camera, uh, the player sort of stays in frame of the camera. Um, and I'm using a new Cine Machine uh, camera called the Third Person Follow Camera to do all of this. Um, there's some features that it comes with out of the box, like um, it's got camera collision, so we don't clip through uh, geometry. And it's also got this um, this nice sort of rubber banding effect when I um, stop the mouse. And this helps when you're sort of trying to aim at something. It just helps to uh, place the cursor exactly on what you are trying to aim at. Cool, uh, so let's get into it. So this video follows on from a previous video I've made, uh, character sprinting using blend trees and animation rigging in Unity. Um, so in the scene here I've got a character and I'd like to add an aiming state for the character when I hold down the right, right mouse button uh, where the camera will zoom in. And um, to do that I'm using a Cine Machine free look camera and what I want to do is basically animate this, uh, this Z offset of the Cine Machine camera offset module. Um, so just like that to zoom the camera in. But there's a couple of issues I've found with this. Um, so if I look directly up at the sky, you'll notice that the, the camera sort of locks at that position and there's, it's kind of easy to fix. Um, it's not the main issue though, but let me just show you how to fix that. Is, uh, you'll notice that the cinema machine has got like these three uh, radius rigs here and the reason it's getting locked to this position is because this is the camera position here and it can't get close enough to the character's feet. Um, so the way to fix that is basically by reducing the radius and you'll notice that the camera can now point directly up towards the sky and yeah similarly we can change the radius for the, um, the top rig and that will allow the character to point at the, uh, the ground. Um, but what happens is you'll notice that the character is now just completely off screen like it's not framed uh, very well um, so long story short um, I've decided to ditch the Cine Machine free look camera which is a shame because it, um, it actually has all this input stuff built directly into it um, so we need to set up all these uh, y-axis and x-axis uh, fields and bind it to the third person follow camera so the the camera that we're gonna yeah, switch to is the third person follow camera which um, was actually added in Cine Machine 2.6 um, so just make sure in package manager you've got 2.6 or later so if I just open up the change log here you can see um, under 2.6 they added a third person follow and third person aim for dead accurate third person aiming camera which is uh, pretty awesome so that doesn't suffer the same problem uh, where the character just slides off screen when I look upwards um, so let me show you how to set all of that up so the first thing that we need to do is just delete the uh, free look camera, this old Cine Machine free look camera. And we're going to replace that with the new one. Um, so to create a new one, just go Cine Machine virtual camera and just drag that into the same spot the old one was in. Um, so there's a couple of properties we need to fill out. First is the follow um, property. So just drag in the same camera look at uh, transform that we were using before. Um, the next thing is just on the body section, just set this to third person follow. So this is the new camera type that they've added in 2.6. If you don't see this, it means you're not up to date with uh, the latest Cine Machine. So just select 2.6 and for the aiming, um, just set that to do nothing. And do nothing just means it will use the forward transform of um, this, this follow uh, transform here to aim the camera. Um, so yeah, we always want the camera to sort of be aiming in the same direction as the, the character and that camera look at node is just the head of the, the character. Um, so I'll just uh, show you a couple of properties here. So under the third person follow module we've got um, damping which I'm actually just going to turn off because I prefer the camera to just uh, move exactly with the, um, the, the character rather than being delayed. And the shoulder offset just lets you control sort of like how far how far offset it is from the the character um, the side controls which side of the the character the camera is on um, the camera distance controls how far forward and back it is so i'm actually going to say that to about 3.5 because that's what we were sort of using before and it's actually got um collision stuff like already built into it and there's another like really cool feature as well um 
which I'll show you in a minute. But uh, yeah, one thing that the Cine Machine virtual cameras do not have built in is the um, all that input access stuff that the old camera had. Um, so let me just show you quickly the old camera again, the free look camera. This has got this uh, Y axis and X axis values, which are bound to the mouse Y and mouse X. Um, so these are just normal Cine Machine properties, which you can actually create in your own scripts. Uh, which is what we're going to do and just bind it. So we're going to create them in the character aiming script and then bind it to the Cine Machine virtual camera. And if I just go into play mode quickly, oh, I might need to uh, just disable this camera here. Um, the way to actually change the rotation of this camera, you can kind of see that the mouse doesn't do anything anymore. The way to change the rotation of this camera is by modifying the, the transform of the follow property. So if I just modify this X uh, rotation, that's changing the pitch of the camera. And if I modify the Y rotation, that changes the, the yaw of the camera. Um, so we're going to basically take those uh, we're going to create the Y axis and the X axis properties in the aiming script and then bind the value field of those to the X and Y rotation of the, the camera. Okay, so hopefully that makes some, some kind of sense. Um, so just open up the character aiming script and then create two new properties. This is for the, uh, it's called cinemachine.axis state. That is the name of the C sharp class to use. So just create one for the X axis and then another one for the, for the Y axis. And um, if we just go back into the inspector really quick, uh, you'll notice that, yeah, we've now got two new properties here and all these values, the max speed acceleration time, um, you can just copy them from the old, uh, the old free look camera here all these values here. Um, I actually know them off by heart, so I'm just going to delete this and just run through it really quickly. Um, so on the character aiming scripts, um, for the value, this gets filled out at runtime. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. So for the max speed, um, it was 300, acceleration was 0 0.02, the axis name for the x-axis is going to be mouse x, um, just leave that at 0, invert input, no for the x-axis, uh, the minimum value for the X is going to be minus 180, uh, which just means that the, the character can sort of do a full 360. And we also want to wrap it around. So if you keep moving the mouse to the to the right, it will just sort of keep spinning and spinning. Um, just leave recentering disabled. And basically, yeah, all the same stuff for the Y axis. Um, it's just a couple of differences. And that is the axis name should be mouse Y. I'm going to invert the um, the y-axis just because that's what I prefer. Uh, the minimum value is going to be minus 90. That just means the camera can look at the ground, but it can't sort of go back and look through the, the character's legs. And plus 90 for the maximum value so it can look at the ceiling. And we want to leave wrap unchecked so it can't sort of loop around like that. That would look a bit weird. Um, cool. So. Um, we actually need to update these these two properties, the x and y axis, to um, fill out this value field. Um, so we've got something to write into the uh, the the rotation value here of the uh, the look at value. So um, just open up the character aiming script. It's actually um, really easy to do this. You just call like x axis dot update, and I'm going to pass in time dot um, whoops fixed delta time uh, just because I'm doing it inside a fixed update of the character aiming script. And then same for the the y-axis. And now all we need to do is just um, get a reference to this uh, camera look at node, so we can write to the rotation your pitch in. Well, the roll will just be left at zero. Um, so I just need to create a new another property here. I'll put it above the axes. Um, public transform, and I'll call this like camera look at. And then just assign that in the inspector here. <clears throat> like that and then so yeah now that these two axes are updated we just want to write to the camera look at dot Euler angles and just create a new vector 3 and we're going to bind so for the X component of the Euler angles that's the pitch which is going to be the Y axis of the mouse um, it's, it's kind of like the other way around and then for the yaw it's going to be the X axis of the mouse and for the roll of the camera just leave that as zero Okay, so that is all we need to do to actually um, get the the camera, the new third person uh, follow camera, like hooked up to the mouse. Cool, so now it's all um, just working pretty much as it was. Um, so there's a couple of cool things. One is like really subtle, but 
If I um if I move the mouse to the left and the right, um, can you kind of see the the crosshair sort of rubber bands? Like when I stop the stop the mouse cursor, and this is actually really useful. Like if I'm aiming at stuff, what? Oh, yeah, sorry, I can't shoot because there's some other um, scripts still referencing the old camera which I need to update. But basically, the the point of that rubber banding is um, what tends to happen when you're aiming at stuff is uh, the you tend to overshoot what you're what you're trying to look at because you see something and your reaction time your mouse keeps moving and then by the time you stop you're sort of over here. So what that rubber band does is helps bring the cursor back to what you originally intended to to aim at, which is a really cool feature. But yeah, most importantly, um, I can now look at the the sky. There's some weird twisting going on there. Um, don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, but I can look at the sky and the camera is still framed um, within the scene, which is, that was the main problem I was trying to fix with the other camera. And now, yeah, I can also um, just inside the body, can now just animate this uh, this camera distance to, to zoom in, um, which is pretty cool. Like if I have it zoomed in and aim up, it still, it still looks good. And oh, the last thing I wanted to show you actually was I move this camera back out something like here now if I you can see that the camera collision just you get it for free when you're using the third-person follow camera and just yeah there's so much stuff that just comes with this module which is pretty awesome okay so now I just need to fix up uh, the reason for that crash when um, I shot the weapon and that's because this uh, this field is now none uh, the player camera field on the active weapon script and previously it was uh, referencing the free look camera and the reason it was doing that is because it gets fed all the way into the weapon recoil script up here um, it's assigned from the active weapon script and that is the thing that it was basically right into the y and x axis of the free look camera but those properties now just exist on the character aiming script um, so we can just yeah refactor all of the stuff to um, to point to the character aiming script. So from the active weapon script, just uh, basically anytime you see free look camera, just replace it with character aiming. And I'm just going to rename this thing to be character aiming. And down here is where it assigns it to the recoil. So I'm just going to also rename that uh, property here on the recoil uh, script. Uh, you'll notice that it's updated magically here. And replace the free look camera here again with the character aiming scripts and finally on the y and the x-axis that's just referencing these properties here so we can just uh, copy those values in or just type them in and one last thing is previously I was dividing by a thousand for the y-axis but um, I, I just need to divide by 10 now it seems to be symmetrical so that's a, a nice sort of thing to happen out of all of this um, Cool, so now just in the inspector, we need to just um, replace the player camera, which should now be character aiming, replace that with the script on the same game object. And the last thing to fix the recoil stuff is uh, just add in the Cine Machine Impulse Listener back into that, that new camera, camera that we're using. Cool, so now if I hit save and push play, uh, everything's, yeah. I think I've lost a reference on the character aiming script. I just need to reassign this camera look at. Don't know what happened there. Okay, cool. So yeah, now if I shoot, all of the recoil patterns and stuff work as they were before, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and yeah, basically everything is now working as it was, except uh, the final difference being can now animate this uh, this camera distance and um, use that to do our aiming, which we'll do now. So now we're actually ready to animate the um, the properties of the camera. Um, so I'm just going to do this inside the animator, and I'm going to create a new layer called Aim Layer, and just uh, make sure to set that to one, so it's on by default. Um, you could also animate it in code, but I just find it uh, using the animators easier for illustration purposes um, so I'm gonna create a new animation and call this like camera zoom in and then just drag that in here and the state the default state will be called camera zoom out and that won't have any animation um, but the zoom in will so just create a transition between them um, uncheck has exit time and I'll just set the transition duration to be something like fairly quick, like maybe 0.08, something like that. 
and now I just need to create a new animation parameter, a new boolean animation parameter called is aiming and that will be the condition on both of these transitions so transition to zoom in should be is aiming is true transition to zoom out should be is aiming is false and yeah that, that's it um, so now we just need to set that is aiming parameter from code and we can do that inside the character aiming script um, so just need to get a reference to the animator here um, you can just do that inside our start animator equals get component uh, animator and need to create a new integer parameter for that is aiming parameter and I'm just going to use the string to hash function because it just means you only sort of create this uh, this string once rather than every time you set the animation parameter so inside update just need to check if the um, the right mouse button is down so there'll be get mouse button one and then on the animator sorry on the animator just set the um, set that boolean is aiming parameter to the value of is aiming cool um, so that's all the wiring sort of hooked up last thing is just to actually uh, add some keyframes into this um, this camera zoom animation so if I just dock this down here um, I think I need to select the uh, the character select the camera zoom in now if I push record I can actually start keyframing some of these um, camera parameters so the first one I'm going to change I'm going to set the camera distance to 2 um, I'm going to set the field of view to like 30 and the camera offset I'm just going to move it across slightly and that is probably good enough so if I hit play and Hopefully, if I just get rid of this animation window, if I pick up a weapon, nice. Now when I push the right mouse button, camera zooms in, and yeah, it's all pretty cool. I mean, that's that's basically it. <clears throat> There's um, just a couple of other things, like the the player can still sprint um, when when I'm aiming. So I want the character to only be able to walk when aiming. So just fix that up now. So just open up the uh, character locomotion script and there's already a massive uh, block of code in here is sprinting. So we just need to check if we are, we're aiming as part of this check as well. Um, so inside the character aiming script, we're already, um, we're already calculating if we're aiming or not. So we can just make this, um, this value public instead, um, instead of just a value that, um, a variable. So just make a public bool is aiming, update that inside update. And then um, inside the uh, sorry character locomotion script, um, we just need to get a reference to the the um, character aiming script now. Character aiming, character aiming, and just call get component character aiming like that. And now inside that block, we can just check um, is aiming character aiming and then just actually check that we're not aiming and that will just mean um, inside is sprinting is sprinting will be false if we're aiming and that means the animation parameters will get set to false cool um, so if I just double check this go into play mode now if I grab a weapon and I start sprinting if I hold down the right mouse button the character starts walking and if I release it, the character goes back to sprinting, which is, uh, yeah, that's what I want. Um, so the final thing to fix up is just the amount of recoil the weapon has. Um, so if I'm zoomed out, it's got that much recoil. If I'm zoomed in, it's uh, the exact same amount. So it seems a little bit unfair. I think if you're zoomed in, you should have uh, less recoil. So I'm just going to create like a recoil modifier um, just to reduce the amount of recoil. So we just need to um, open up the weapon recoil script here and um, I'm just going to create a new public float called uh, like recoil modifier and this should be I guess like one by default so it doesn't do anything and um, yeah basically we just want to modify this recoil amount here so multiply this whole chunk here by the recoil modifier something like this recoil modifier cool 
and yeah um, now we actually just need to set that recoil modifier from the character aiming script um, so just inside update um, I think we just need to get reference to the active weapon uh, in here so the character aiming script yeah just get a reference to the active weapon inside start equals get component active weapon and yeah now inside update <clears throat> make sure you just check if we are aiming or oh, actually first uh, just check that we've got a weapon so yeah I guess weapon equals active weapon dot get active weapon so if we have a weapon then we just want to set the weapon dot recoil dot recoil modifier equals to is aiming so if we are if we are aiming then just reduce it to like I don't know 0 0.3 <laughs> you could you can make this per weapon as well but I'm just doing this kind of quickly for now yeah reduce it by like 70% when we are aiming otherwise just leave it at one and yeah I think hopefully that's it push play grab a weapon so that's not aiming Cool. Yeah, it looks a lot less. Uh, there's a lot less recoil when we're aiming now, which is uh, just makes it a lot easier to control. Cool. Sweet. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Um, so yeah, if you've made it to the end, really appreciate you watching. Um, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to see more videos like this. Um, hit like if you've enjoyed the video or dislike if you didn't like it. Uh, let me know what you're interested in seeing next. Um, I'm kind of coming to an end of this series. Uh, I was going to do crawling, but I'm not even sure if uh, people really want to see that. Um, I think I'm, I'm just going to go straight on to AI after this. Um, or multiplayer. It's a bit of a debate uh, which one I'm going to do next. I might put like a, um, a poll out as part of this tutorial uh, just to see what people are more interested in. Cool, yeah, um, so thanks for watching and we'll see you again with the next video. Ka kite!